The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. This is a LibriVox recording by Phil Chenever. The Raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly, I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here for evermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, this it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I open wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, Long I stood there wondering, fearing, Doubting, dreaming dreams No mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, And the stillness gave no token, And the only word there spoken Was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, And an echo murmured back the word, Lenore merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, Perched upon a bust of Pallas just above my chamber door, Perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling, My sad fancy into smiling, By the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore, Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, Ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore, Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Platonian shore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Much I marvelled this ungainly, foul to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door, with such name as Nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further then he uttered, not a feather then he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. 
On the morrow he will lead me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store. Caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster Followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, Till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore, Of never, never more. But the raven, still beguiling all my fancy into smiling, Straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then, upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch! I cried. Thy God has lent thee, by these angels he has sent thee. Respite, respite, and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Quote the raven, Nevermore. Prophet, said I, think of evil, prophet still of bird or devil. Whether tempter sent, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, Desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, On this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, Is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quote the raven, Nevermore. Prophet, said I, Thing of evil, prophet still of bird or devil, By that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, Tell this soul with sorrow laden, If within the distant Aden It shall clasp a sainted maiden Whom the angels name Lenore, Clasp a rare and radiant maiden Whom the angels name Lenore. Quote the raven, Nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shriek, upstarting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quote the raven. Nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, On the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door, And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, And the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted Nevermore. End of The Raven. This recording is in the public domain. Alone by Edgar Allan Poe. This is a LibriVox recording. Alone. From childhood's hour I have not been as others were, I have not seen as others saw. I could not bring my passions from a common spring, From the same source I have not taken my sorrow. 
I could not awaken my heart to joy at the same tone, and all I loved I loved alone. Then, in my childhood, in the dawn of a most stormy life, was drawn from every depth of good and ill the mystery which binds me still. From the torrent or the fountain, from the red cliff of the mountain, from the sun that round me rolled in its autumn tent of gold, from the lightning in the sky as it passed me flying by, from the thunder and the storm, and the cloud that took the form, when the rest of heaven was blue, of a demon in my view. End of the poem alone. This recording is in the public domain. The City in the Sea by Edgar Allan Poe. This is a LibriVox recording. The City in the Sea. Lo, death has reared himself a throne in a strange city lying alone, far down within the dim west, where the good and the bad and the worst and the best have gone to their eternal rest. There shrines and palaces and towers, time-eaten towers that tremble not, resemble nothing that is ours. Around by lifting winds forgot, resignedly beneath the sky, the melancholy waters lie. No rays from the holy heaven come down on the long night-time of that town, but light from out the lurid sea streams up the torrents silently, gleams up the pinnacles far and free, up domes, up spires, up kingly halls, up fanes, up Babylon-like walls, up shadowy long-forgotten bowers, of sculptured ivy and stone flowers, up many and many a marvelous shrine whose wreathed friezes intertwine, the vile, the violet, and the vine. Resignedly beneath the sky the melancholy waters lie. So blend the torrents and shadows there that all seem pendulous in air, while from a proud tower in the town death looks gigantically down. There open fanes and gaping graves yawn level with the luminous waves, but not the riches there that lie in each idol's diamond eye, not the gaily jeweled dead tempt the waters from their bed, for no ripples curl, alas, along that wilderness of glass, no swellings tell that winds may be upon some far-off happier sea, no heavings hint that winds have been on seas less hideously serene. But, lo! A stir is in the air. The wave, there is a movement there, as if the towers had thrust aside in slightly sinking the dull tide, as if their tops had feebly given a void within the filmy heaven. The waves have now a redder glow, the hours are breathing faint and low. And when, amid no earthly moans, down, down that town shall settle hence, hell rising from a thousand thrones shall do it reverence. End of The City in the Sea This recording is in the public domain. The Bells by Edgar Allan Poe this is a LibriVox recording. THE BELLS Hear the sleighs with the bells, silver bells! What a world of merriment their melody foretells! How they tinkle, 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 In the icy air of night, while the stars that oversprinkle all the heavens seem to twinkle with a crystalline delight, keeping time, 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 in a sort of runic rhyme, to the tintinnabulation that so musically wells from the bells, 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 
from the jingling and the tinkling of the bells. Hear the mellow wedding bells, golden bells, what a world of happiness their harmony foretells. Through the balmy air of night, how they ring out their delight, from the molten golden notes and all in tune, what a liquid ditty floats to the turtle-dove that listens while she gloats on the moon. Oh, from out the sounding cells, what a gush of euphony voluminously wells, how it swells, how it dwells on the future, how it tells of the rapture that impels to the swinging and the ringing of the bells, 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 of the bells, 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 to the rhyming and the chiming of the bells. Hear the loud alarm bells, brazen bells! What a tale of terror now their turbulency tells! In the startled ear of night, how they scream out their affright! Too much horrified to speak, they can only shriek, shriek, out of tune, in a clamorous appealing to the mercy of the fire, in a mad expostulation with the deaf and frantic fire, leaping higher, 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 with a desperate desire, and a resolute endeavor now, now to sit or never by the side of the pale-faced moon. Oh, the bells, bells, bells! What a tale their terror tells of despair! How they clang and clash and roar! What a horror they outpour on the bosom of the palpitating air! Yet the ear it fully knows, by the twanging and the clanging, how the danger ebbs and flows, yet the ear distinctly tells in the jangling and the wrangling how the danger sinks and swells by the sinking or the swelling in the anger of the bells of the bells of the bells 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 in the clamor and the clangor of the bells hear the tolling of the bells iron bells what a world of solemn thought their monody compels! In the silence of the night how we shiver with affright At the melancholy menace of their tone! For every sound that floats from the rust within their throats is a groan. And the people, ah, the people, they that dwell up in the steeple, all alone, and who, toiling, 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 in that muffled monotone, feel a glory in so rolling on the human heart a stone. They are neither man nor woman, they are neither brute nor human. They are ghouls, and their king it is who tolls, and he rolls, 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 rolls a peon from the bells. And his merry bosom swells with the peon of the bells, And he dances and he yells, Keeping time, 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 In a sort of runic rhyme to the peon of the bells, of the bells, Keeping time, 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 In a sort of runic rhyme to the throbbing of the bells, Of the bells, 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 to the sobbing of the bells, keeping time, 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 as he knells, 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 in a happy runic rhyme to the rolling of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the tolling of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the moaning and the groaning of the bells. End of the Bells This recording is in the public domain. A Dream Within a Dream This is a LibriVox recording. A Dream Within a Dream 
take this kiss upon the brow. And in parting from you now, this much let me avow. You are not wrong who deem that my days have been a dream. Yet if hope has flown away, in a night or in a day, in a vision or in none, is it therefore the less gone? All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. I stand amid the roar of a surf-tormented shore, and I hold within my hand grains of the golden sand. How few, yet how they creep through my fingers to the deep, while I weep, while I weep. O oh God, can I not grasp them with a tighter clasp? O oh God, can I not save one from the pitiless wave? Is all that we see or seem but a dream within a dream? End of A Dream Within a Dream This recording is in the public domain. Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe This is a LibriVox recording. Annabelle Lee It was many and many a year ago, in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child, and she was a child, in this kingdom by the sea, but we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabelle Lee, with a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that, long ago, in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud chilling my beautiful Annabelle Lee so that her high-born kinsmen came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulchre in this kingdom by the sea. The angels, not half so happy in heaven, went envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabel Lee. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above, nor the demons down under the sea, can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabel Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabel Lee, and the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And so, all the night tide, I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride, in her sepulchre there by the sea, in her tomb by the sounding sea. End of Annabelle Lee this recording is in the public domain. Dreamland by Edgar Allan Poe This is a LibriVox recording. Dreamland By a route obscure and lonely, haunted by ill angels only, where an idolon named Night on a black throne reigns upright. I have reached these lands but newly From an ultimate dim fuely, From a wild weird clime that lieth sublime, Out of space, out of time, Bottomless vales and boundless floods, And chasms and caves and titan woods, With forms that no man can discover, For the tears that drip all over Mountains toppling evermore into seas without a shore, Seas that restlessly aspire, surging unto skies of fire, Lakes that endlessly outspread their lone waters, lone and dead, 
their still waters still and chilly with the snows of the lolling lily by the lakes that thus outspread their lone waters lone and dead their sad waters sad and chilly with the snows of the lolling lily by the mountains near the river murmuring lowly murmuring ever by the gray woods by the swamp where the toad and the newt encamp by the dismal tarns and pools where dwell the ghouls by each spot the most unholy in each nook most melancholy there the traveller meets aghast sheeted memories of the past shrouded forms that start and sigh as they pass the wanderer by white-robed forms of friends long given in agony to the earth and heaven for the heart whose woes are legion tis a peaceful soothing region for the spirit that walks in shadow tis so oh, tis an el dorado but the traveller travelling through it may not dare not openly view it never its mysteries are exposed to the weak human eye and closed so wills its king who hath forbid the uplifting of the fringed lid and thus the sad soul that here passes beholds it but through darkened glasses by a route obscure and lonely haunted by ill angels only where an idolon named night on a black throne reigns upright i have wandered home but newly from this ultimate dim thule end of dreamland this recording is in the public domain evening star by edgar allan poe this is a librivox recording Evening Star Twas noontide of summer and midtime of night, and stars in their orbits shone pale through the light of the brighter cold moon. Mid planets her slaves, herself in the heavens, her beam on the waves. I gazed a while on her cold smile, too cold, too cold for me. There passed, as a shroud, a fleecy cloud, And I turned away to thee, proud evening star, In thy glory afar, and dearer thy beam shall be, For joy to my heart is the proud part thou bearest in heaven at night, And more I admire thy distant fire than that colder lowly light. End of Evening Star this recording is in the public domain. Lenore by Edgar Allan Poe This is a LibriVox recording. Lenore Ah, broken is the golden bowl, The spirit flown for ever, let the bell toll. A saintly soul floats on the Stygian river, and Guy de Vere, hast thou no tear? Weep now, or never more. See, on yon drear and rigid bier, Low lies thy love, Lenore. Come, let the burial rite be read, The funeral song be sung, An anthem for the queenliest dead That ever died so young. A dirge for her, the doubly dead, In that she died so young. Wretches, ye loved her for her wealth, and hated her for her pride. And when she fell in feeble health, ye blessed her that she died. How shall the ritual then be read, the requiem how be sung? By you, by yours the evil eye, by yours the slanderous tongue, That did to death the innocent that died and died so young. Pecanimus. But rave not thus, and let a Sabbath song Go up to God, so solemnly the dead may feel no wrong. The sweet Lenore hath gone before, with hope that flew beside, Leaving thee wild for the dear child, 
that should have been thy bride. For her, the fair and debonair, that now so lowly lies, the life upon her yellow hair, but not within her eyes, the life still there upon her hair, the death upon her eyes. Avaunt, avaunt, from friends below the indignant ghost is riven, from hell unto a high estate far up within the heaven, from grief and groan to a golden throne beside the king of heaven, let no bell toll then, lest her soul amid its hallowed mirth should catch the note as it doth float up from the damned earth. And I, to-night, my heart is light, no dirge will I upraise, but waft the angel on her flight with the peon of old days. End of Lenore This recording is in the public domain. El Dorado by Edgar Allan Poe. This is a LibriVox recording. El Dorado. Gaily bedight, a gallant knight in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long, singing a song in search of El Dorado. But he grew old, this knight so bold and o'er his heart a shadow fell as he found no spot of ground that looked like El Dorado. And as his strength failed him at length, he met a pilgrim shadow. Shadow, said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? Over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow, ride, boldly ride, the shade replied, if you seek for El Dorado. End of El Dorado. This recording is in the public domain. A Valentine by Edgar Allan Poe. This is a LibriVox recording. A Valentine. For her this rhyme is pinned, whose luminous eyes, brightly expressive as the twins of Leda, shall find her own sweet name that nestling lies upon the page and wrapped from every reader. Search narrowly the lines, they hold a treasure, divine, a talisman, an amulet, that must be worn at heart. Search well the measure, the words, the syllables. Do not forget the trivialest point, or you may lose your labor. And yet there is in this no guardian knot, which one might not undo without a saber, if one could merely comprehend the plot. In written upon the leaf where now are peering eyes scintillating soul, there lies perdue three eloquent words oft uttered in the hearing of poets by poets, as the name is a poet's too. Its letters, although naturally lying like the knight Pinto Mendez Ferdinando, still form a synonym for truth, cease trying. You will not read the riddle, though you do the best you can do. End of A Valentine This recording is in the public domain. THE HAPPIEST DAY by Edgar Allan Poe This is a LibriVox recording. THE HAPPIEST DAY The happiest day, the happiest hour, my seared and blighted heart hath known, the highest hope of pride and power I feel hath flown. Of power, said I, yes, such I ween, but they have vanished long, alas. The visions of my youth have been, but let them pass. And pride, what have I now with thee? Another brow may even inherit the venom thou hast poured on me. Be still, my spirit. The happiest day, the happiest hour mine eyes shall see, have ever seen. The brightest glance of pride and power I feel have been. 
But were that hope of pride and power now offered with the pain, even then I felt that brightest hour I would not live again. Far on its wing was dark alloy, and as it fluttered, fell, an essence powerful to destroy a soul that knew it well. End of The Happiest Day This recording is in the public domain.